version when this application was rejected it would be one of the most heartbreaking moments. I mean, lahat naman ng rejection, masakit, di ba? Lalo na pag you put a lot of effort on it, yung pagod, yung um, time na nilaan nyo to be able to complete all those documents, the money na inipon at nagastos nyo sa visa application will be all gone. And of course, mapapatanong ka na lang, bakit na-reject yung application ko? Everything naman na sinabit ko are all good. Kompleto naman yung um, application. Kompleto naman yung documents ko. May sponsor naman ako. I mean, when it comes to approving your visa application, there are a lot of factors to consider. If there's someone who already uh, applied for a Schengen visa before, pag bumalik sa inyo yung passport nyo, normally dun sa mga nag-deny, may kasama siyang paper eh, nandun yung um, uh, denial reason, lahat ng denial reason, and then naka-X doon yung reason ng consul bakit nila dinina yung application mo. Now, I'm going to talk about yung pinaka-common or yung madalas na nagiging reason ng consul bakit nila dinina yung application nyo. And I'm going to talk about how you can overcome that or paano nyo aayusin yung um, application nyo or yung papers nyo so that in the next uh, try nyo, or pangatlo man yan, pangalawa, pang-apat na pag-try nyo na mag-apply ng visa is maybe it will help your um, application na magkaroon ng chance na ma-approve. First common reason is justification of the purpose and condition of the intended stay was not provided. So, it means na parang hindi naniniwala yung um, console dun sa reason kung bakit gusto niyo makapag-travel sa Europe. Like, information was not uh, good enough. They're not satisfied with with your reason. Kumbaga. So, this uh, that's why a uh, cover letter plays a big role kung paano nyo i-explain sa console yung um, sitwasyon nyo, yung intention nyo, and uh, explaining to them like bak paan, bakit kayo babalik ng Pilipinas and like assuring them, assuring them that we will not overstay. So when making a cover letter, make sure that it is personalized and you're not just going to copy it in the internet. Uh, the, co the cover letter should really come from you. Kung baga, paano kang nagkipag-usap sa console, but of course, in a way na sinusulat mo lang siya because, like again, uh, not everyone given a chance to really meet those persons that are reviewing your application. So, ibang tao yung mga yun. Iba pa yung tao sa embassy na tumatanggap ng application mo at iba pa rin yung tao na nag-review mismo or nag-approve at nag-deny ng application mo. So, when it comes to your cover letter, make sure that it answers uh, uh, questions such as um, Sino kasama mo pagka-travel? Um, what will you do in the Schengen Zone? Where are you planning to travel inside the Schengen Zone? And where will you stay habang nasa Schengen kayo? And what do you want? why do you want to travel in Europe? And how are you going to fund your stay? So those questions are the question mostly hinahanap na console. Hinahanap na nila ng sagot. And of course, whatever information na nakasulat sa cover letter nyo, it should have a backup document or yung mga tinatawag natin na supporting document. If you're going to mention to your cover letter that I am currently working at this company, earning this salary, and they approved me to have a vacation from this date up to this date, of course, that will not be enough unless you have supporting document na nagpo-proof kung ano man yung mga nakasulat sa um, cover letter nyo. And a cover letter as well should have like a brief uh, a history or information about your intended travel or your travel plan nyo pagdating sa Europe. Another reason is the number three which is you have not provided sufficient means of subsistence for the duration of the intended stay or for the return to the country of the origin or residence or for transit to a third country into which you are certain to admit it or you are not in a position to acquire such means lawfully. So in short, the consulate was able to find out that uh, your funds or your money, the savings more or your money from the sponsor is not enough to support your um, travel when you Schengen. I mean, and then, sa mga natatanong kung magkano yung pera na dapat naman ng savings nila or ng bank nila to, to be able to consider it as enough, uh, I really can't give an exact amount. But the thing is, if you're planning to stay longer in Europe, of course, you will need big amount of money. So if in the future, you're planning, uh, wanted to 
tour around Europe or any country, you need to make ipon, guys. Hindi naman pwede na gusto kong pumunta ng Europe tapos sasabihin nyo, eh, wala po akong bank account, wala po akong pera, gano'n rin pa. I mean, kailangan mo siyempre mag-ipon. You need to save up kasi hindi naman to Pilipinas na kaya mo mag-travel in a very uh, limited amount of money. Medyo may mga factors na kailangan ni consider si consulate na kaya mo talaga lang support yung day-to-day -day expenses mo. So, if the reason for denial is number three, it means uh, kulang yung pera nyo. So, what you can do to avoid this is to make sure that there's a big amount of money in your bank or if you don't have a bank account and you don't have a job or you're unemployed, uh, having someone who will sponsor your trip will be helpful. But then again, you need to consider na that sponsor or that person that is going to pay for all your expenses have enough money to support you and support themselves. So if mapeta ka kayo, sabihin nyo, I do have sponsor naman but why I'm still rejected. Um, sponsor is not enough to be able to be given a chance to have your visa approved. Hindi, hindi sponsor lang ang tinitingnan. There's a lot of factors to consider. Now, let's say um, you're someone who's employed and you have a big amount of money in your savings. Let's say meron kang 500,000 or meron kang 1 million. Pero na deny ka pa rin. So, possible reason is if your bank account or your bank statement is showing big let's say, deposit of money, like some money na bigla na lang i-deposit sa bank account nyo. Pero if they're going to look on the history, hindi naman umaabot ng ganun ka na kayo yung pera na ipinapasok nyo sa bank nyo. Uh, this can make up uh, the consulate question if this money is really yours. Kasi uh, they don't just base the um, approval or they don't just base their decision based on the amount of money that your bank account have. Uh, they also consider yung uh, history or yung uh, transactions dun sa bank account mo. So, if your bank account now is or walang en enough money, I would suggest to deposit or transfer or add money to it na paunti-unti. Hindi yung bigla ang bagsak. Kasi very questionable nga naman na parang saan nang uh, kabakit nagkaroon agad ng gato ka lang pera just because you're going to apply. Uh, let's say next month, so they can think na show money lang to, pwedeng uh, hiniram mo lang to, pwedeng um, kunwari lang na meron kang pera. So they also consider yung transactions and history of your bank account to see the stability ng account mo. And then another reason bakit nadedeny kahit maraming pera is because um, if you're someone na maraming pera sa bank account, Let's say again, example is yung 500,000 to 1 million. But then you are someone who is unemployed or walang trabaho or wala rin kayong business. So, how come this person have that amount of money tapos wala naman siyang trabaho, wala naman siyang business? So, medyo questionable. The consult can be judgmental. They judge uh, based on the documents that you submit to them. So, of course, magtataka sila, bakit ganito ka lang yung pera mo? Pero wala namang supporting document, bakit ganito ka lang yung pera mo, di ba? So, if you're someone and uh, being supported ng husband, ng wife, ng partner, ng boyfriend, girlfriend, or ng parents, yung tipong pinapadalan kayo ng pera monthly to support you, tapos nakaipon kayo ng ganong amount. So, you need to show proof na may pinagagalingan or may source yung pera na nagaling sa account nyo. You can use yung mga receipt uh, showing the transfer or deposit ng pera from your family member para ipakita sa kanila na this money comes from someone that is supporting you day-to-day -day expenses sa Pilipinas. If you've been rejected and yung number 7 ang naka-X, uh, this means that the proof of holding an adequate and valid travel medical insurance was not provided. This is why I always said na pagdating sa pagkuha ng health or travel insurance, it's better to check with the uh, embassy website to see kung ano yung mga accredited na a health insurance provider ang pinatagap sa Schengen. Um, because uh, there are things to consider pagdating sa in-offer ng health insurance. Kailangan meron siyang i-cover, let's say, for hospital or for accident. So, may mga dapat ma-hit pagdating sa health insurance. So, if you're having a hard time deciding which travel or health insurance to get, again, you can check the website of the embassy and nandun yung mga accredited na health insurance. And ang maganda sa health insurance, masasabi mong maganda, the provider is a uh, insurance provider that offer a refund just in case lang na ma-deny yung application nyo. So, if this uh, number 7 yung may ex, I think you need to check with the health insurance kung saan na kayong mayan if 
uh, they are being accredited by the Schengen or ano yung mga cover no health insurance na binigay nila sa inyo. Next, if ang reason ng denial is yung number 8, which said the information submitted regarding the justification of the purpose and the condition of the intended stay was not reliable. Basically, whatever is the purpose of your travel, it should have a supporting document that is reliable dun sa purpose ng travel nyo. Example, you apply for a tourist visa, tapos you have supporting documents that is showing na you're going to visit your family member, you're going to stay in your family member house. So, uh, the purpose, which is uh, going to be tourist visa does not match the supporting documents kasi kung yun yung pinaka-intention or yun yung mga supporting documents na meron kayo, then in the first place, you should apply for a visit visa. Again, lahat ng documents nyo should have a supporting reliable documents para tanggapin ng consulate yung reason nyo. Then we go to number 9. This is one of the most most common reason na napapansin ko dun sa mga nadinay. So yung number 9 said, your intention to leave the territory of the member state before the expiry of the visa could not be ascertained. So ito yung parang sasabihin mo, babalik naman ako ng Pilipinas, bakit idinay pa rin nila ako? I mean, um, again, the immigration or the consulate or the embassies are trying their best to make sure that the people that they're going to uh, approve the visa will not overstay in the Schengen to uh, minimize and mabawasan yung mga immigrants sa Europe. So, if you're just planning to uh, visit Europe as a tourist or just visiting a family member and then you're going home to the Philippines, of course, you would need to convince them and give them supporting documents that show na may babalik ka sa Pilipinas or may reason ka para bumalik ng Pilipinas. And showing a returning ticket or your round trip ticket is not enough to prove na babalik ka ng Pilipinas. Again, yung hinihingi ngayon pagdating sa um, uh, flight ticket is not the embassy suggests for you not to buy the real ticket, di ba? Kasi nga, uh, no assurance na ma-approve yung visa mo. So, those uh, tickets that you are showing to the embassy, they know are not really paid. So, if i-deny man nila yung visa, yung visa mo, alam nila na hindi rin sila pang-inayang. Kasi nga, ang nila request nila is a uh, ticket na hindi paid. So, if you buy a real ticket, it doesn't mean they will approve you. So, ano ba yung mga reason to help convince the consulate na may babalik ka sa Pilipinas? Dito na papasok yung um, strong ties in the Philippines or yung rootedness. So, some people are asking, is this really required? It is now required kasi the more na makikita nila na may strong ties ka sa Pilipinas, such as business, properties, asset, or land under your name. If hindi pa nakapangalan sa'yo yung land, let's say, uh, it's better to have a deed of sale. So, um, anything, any um, investment properties that you have, which is under your name, can be considered or pwede prove na may babalik ka sa Pilipinas. So, it showed them na may strong connection ka or commitment na may iwan sa Pilipinas. Of course, if you have these things, there is a reason for you to go back to your country kasi meron kayong babalikan. Meron kayong mga need as ikasuin. May business kayo na dapat balikan, di ba? So, these uh, things that I mentioned plays a big role na ma-approve din kayo kasi makikita ng embassy na may babalikan kayo sa Pilipinas. If you do not have any of this, but you have, uh, yung natawag natin, a strong family tie sa Pilipinas, which will call yung mga, and if, may, if you have children that are studying, uh, they can be the reason for you to come back to the Philippines kasi sino mo mag-aalaga sa anak niyo kung di kayo, di ba? So, uh, if you have children, you can uh, show a birth certificate, uh, enrollment sa school, school ID. So, to uh, show the embassy na may anak kayong nag-aaral, na may anak kayong may iwanan. So, you can also use that. So, those are the common uh, reasons why your Schengen visa application get rejected. So, if you really think that the consulate uh, decision was wrong, that you think that they should have approved your um, application kasi alam nyo sa sarili nyo na lahat ng papers nyo is tama, kompleto kayo sa requirements, you can always uh, send an appeal. And this will uh, give the consulate another uh, chance to be able to review your application and to see if there is a mistake. So yes guys, so I hope that this video helped answer all your um, questions regarding uh, why your visa application got rejected. So if it did help, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please 
please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell button to be updated on my upcoming videos and i would like to mention again if you do need in the future or if you will be applying well, in the future, uh, I do offer writing services for cover letter, invitation letter, sponsorship letter, and I do also do uh, uh, itinerary. I have a website where everything you need is in there, the information, the prices, so I will have it in here. So yeah, uh, I'll see you on my next video guys, and thank you! Bye!